All right, so today we're going to discuss Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle is closely intertwined or intertwined with uh, the concept of equilibrium. And it basically talks about stresses. I don't mean to stress you out. No, I, we're going to talk about stresses. So these stresses are concentration, temperature, and pressure. The definition of, or the, the principle of Le Chatelier says that if a system, chemical system, is at equilibrium and it experiences a change in concentration, temperature, or total pressure, the equilibrium will shift in order to minimize that change. And um, that change is um, whatever is going to return it to equilibrium or to eventually reestablish equilibrium. The three stresses involve concentration, temperature, and pressure. And pressure and volume can also be changed. The volume of the system can also be changed. If pressure and volume are uh, related very closely because, as you know, volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So keeping that in mind, let's look at each one of the stresses and what happens. All right, so let's say that the concentration, let's talk about the effect of concentration, changing concentration. If I have uh, this reaction, nitrogen plus hydrogen equals or yields ammonium nitrate, ammo, I'm sorry, ammonia, what am I thinking? Ammonia. Uh, and I add some nitrogen to, um, to the reaction, I add nitrogen to the reaction, then uh, what's going to happen is the system will shift to the right in order to use up the nitrogen and thus it will produce more ammonia. So the concentration of ammonia will increase. On the other hand, if I increase the amount of hydrogen, I add hydrogen to the system, what's going to happen is that the system again will shift to the right in order to uh, use up the hydrogen and move over uh, and uh, produce more ammonia. On the other hand, if I take uh, ammonia and increase its concentration in this system, immediately the system, the equilibrium will shift to the left in order to minimize the effect that adding more ammonia cost and therefore it will then produce more nitrogen and hydrogen, the nitrogen hydrogen concentration will increase. Let's take a look at the effect of temperature. If um, this reaction happens to be a, an exothermic reaction, because you notice the uh, delta H is um, equal to negative 92 kilojoules per mole, meaning that if there's a negative sign, that means that it's an, an exothermic reaction that um, the heat was given up, so um, the heat was released. So it's minus 92 uh, kilojoules per mole. So exothermic reaction is going to be, um, uh, this is, we're going to put the heat, we're going to say that the heat is on the product side. So we could write plus heat on this side. Uh, so we treat it as a coefficient, as a, I'm sorry, as, as one more uh, product. If we add heat or we increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to the uh, left in order to decrease that effect. Uh, whereas if we decrease the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to the right in order to produce more heat. For a changing pressure, if the system, uh, if we add uh, or increase the pressure, it will shift to the right side, meaning that it will um, shift toward the ammonia side in order to go to the side that has least, uh, least amount of um, moles. 
and on the contrary, if we decrease the pressure, it is going to go to the side with the greatest number of moles.